Plus, a record number of organ transplants, the story of one woman who got hers. Good morning and thank you so much for waking up with us on this Tuesday. I'm Sofia Espinosa. Developing news now, a previously unknown victim of serial killer John Wayne Gacy has been identified. The Cook County Sheriff's Office says victim number five is Francis Wayne Alexander, originally from North Carolina. His body was found in a crawl space of Gacy's house in 1978. Police say Alexander lived in the area of Gacy's home in the Chicago suburbs. Gacy was arrested after police were looking into the disappearance of a teenager at his house. Investigators found 29 bodies buried on Gacy's property. The state of Illinois is preparing for thousands of vaccines ahead of the FDA and CDC approval for kids 5 to 11. State leaders are working with pediatricians, local health departments and schools to help with the rollout. Illinois is expected to receive over 300,000 doses, which will head to local doctors, offices, health departments and clinics. Vaccination rates haven't changed much since the start of the month. 69% of the state's population has received one dose of the vaccine and 54% is fully vaccinated. Those percentages have barely changed in three weeks. Governor J.B. Pritzker also announced the largest union agreement regarding COVID-19 vaccinations for state employees who are represented by AFSCME. Nearly 10,000 state workers are now covered under union vaccine agreements, meaning those employees within the Illinois Department of Human Services and Veterans Affairs are protected with the COVID-19 vaccines. Employees under all union vaccine agreements are required to get their first shot by October 26 and the second shot by November 30th. The agreement includes a process allowing employees seeking medical and religious exemptions. The Biden administration says it plans to take steps to increase the availability of rapid at home COVID-19 tests. This while also making them more affordable. Experts say the test can be particularly helpful during what can be a bad flu season. Symptoms for the flu and COVID-19 can be similar and the test can help tell the difference between the two. The National Kidney Foundation of Illinois launched its educational campaign hoping to address the high rates of the disease in minorities. Kidney disease often has no symptoms in its early stages. The National Foundation reports the disease is the eighth leading cause of death among Illinoisans. The organization says they are making an effort to share education and information about prevention to minorities. <laughs> <laughs> She's not impressed. Every day for the next couple months, I just speechless. I don't know. <laughs> well, should I tell you that, uh, you know, October, we see the biggest drop in daytime high temperatures from okay. the beginning of the month to the end, end of the month. Okay. That happens again in November, too. So. <laughs> Prepare so, yourself. I, so this is just the beginning? <laughs> this is just the beginning. I thought the moral of the story there was going to be Anthony was just going to be like, Tell me that it gets hey, better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this this was the worst month. Now things, you know, even out a bit. No, no, no. It's he's like, like, oh, it's going to happen. You just again. went over a big waterfall. Now you got another big <laughs> waterfall coming up. Yeah. Then, you can, then temperatures will start stabilizing some. Okay. All go. right. All right. Just I'll, I kind of give it to you the way it is. I don't want you to be unprepared. Exactly. At least I'll be ready. And yes. that's the best thing you can do as a meteorologist. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh. <laughs> if you normally give someone their favorite beverage for the holidays, you might need to come up with another plan. This as officials warn traditional stocking stuffers from your favorite brands of alcohol probably won't be an option this year. Hannah Jeffries has more. Wait. A second set of maps. That's right, and WND's Doug Wolf talked to Congressman Rodney Davis, who would have a massive district running from the border of Missouri all the way to the border of Indiana. The Congressman Davis's current district has been carved out to benefit a Democrat running in the 2022 elections. A portion of Decatur would be in the new district. Lawmakers at the state capitol have filed a proposal to end lawsuits against the governor's COVID-19 restrictions. Many of those lawsuits are using the Health Care Right of Conscience Act from 1998 as an excuse for clients to defy mandates. The original law protected doctors or surgeons refusing to participate in procedures against their beliefs. An amendment filed to state states that people would not violate the law if they would require restrictions. The amendment still has to pass the Senate and the House. Thousands of leaked documents from Facebook reveals employee debates over issues on user safety and misinformation. The documents were released by former employee Francis Haugen. Haugen has been urging lawmakers to investigate and regulate the company. The documents are calling into question Facebook's actions leading up to the January 6th attack on the Capitol and how the company dealt with misleading posts about COVID-19 and vaccines. And a beloved Texas business is now back open 
for the holiday season. I'm super excited and so is the tradition they bring to the table. Meredith Yeomans shows us the return of the Greenberg smoked turkeys. Mission is complete. The team says it is working with law enforcement and is conducting its own internal safety review after actor Alec Baldwin accidentally shot cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Baldwin shot Hutchins after this on the set after the assistant director handed him a gun telling him it was cold, meaning it had no live rounds in it. A new episode of La Brea airs tonight and the show is the first major acting role for one of its young stars, a 19 year old who's one of the rare amputees with a regular spot on network television. Mark Barger introduces us to Zyra Garecki. All right, Darren, Halloween is just six or five days away, depending on how you count for that night, right? And we want to celebrate the spooky season safely, makes sense. Some parents might be wary though about going trick or treating this year. Milligan University has them covered. It's a safe option for all. Parents and kids can pull. And I'm Sofia Espinosa. It's 6 a.m. on this Tuesday. And meteorologist Anthony Peoples is joining us now. Anthony, the cold, it's coming. I know, I know, I'm over it. But as the <laughs> you're sun. You're not over it. I'm not. There's but no way you're it's over for, it. <laughs> at this moment, I am. But as the sun comes out, hopefully little by little, it gets a tiny bit warmer, please. It will get over. and witches. I just want to, can we go back to that graphic, the little dancing thing? I didn't, d let's all there appreciate that. Yeah. Let's yeah. take a yeah. second oh. to appreciate that because I think you worked very hard on that. And look at the little Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. So I was creative. Getting it. He's I worked getting very it because the weather's good. That. As Darren says, I copied and pasted. I worked very hard <laughs> on it. But hey, it, it, control C, control fun. V is very challenging sometimes. It yeah, is. I, good workout for your fingers. <laughs> yes. But, you know, they're dancing a good tune because that's nice weather for a Halloween Exactly, us. exactly. You can dance outside as opposed to having to dance inside. Yes, we know that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing Sophia is really concerned with. What does the temperature say and will there be sunshine? The first thing I do when I wake up every single morning is check the weather. Check, check our weather app to see what the heck is going to mm -hmm. be happening. That's a shameless plug to go yes, get our weather app. Yes, I do love the shameless plug. Good work. You're learning. <laughs> That's what most people do. They want to know the weather first thing. Yeah, exactly. That's how you kind of prepare for your day, really. Mm -hmm. So, very important. Yep, still ahead. Buying booze on the rocks. How yet another shortage could impact your holiday drink selection. Good morning to you, Central Illinois, and thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Darren Mullen. And I'm Sofia Spinoza. It's 6 a.m. and meteorologist Anthony Peoples joins us now. Actually, it's 6.30. Sorry about that, Anthony. Yeah, I'm about to say, i got to yeah, recalibrate like, my watch here. I don't have a watch, but I'm like, it's whatever I'm going by and my internal clock is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Please, right. I don't want to do another hour show. we got 30 minutes left, yeah, right, that, Anthony? That's right. It's, it's 6.29.53 <laughs> this morning, Thank Sophia. you so much for clarifying for exactly us. Exactly <laughs> on the dot. I love he this He can guy. tell the time, tell us the weather. What can't you do, Anthony? Oh, there, uh, There's quite a few things I <laughs> can't do so I don't focus on them 